This video is going to be how a defrost timer from your refrigerator works. And I just took the front cover off, and if you take a look inside of there, it's basically just a gear reduction that's hooked up to a set of contacts that switches between running the compressor motor and running the heating element in the freezer compartment. So uh, let's flip this over, and if you look at the back, you can see that this is actually the motor that turns and it's connected to these two posts, which are the two posts I have connected to power. And I will turn this on. And it's kind of hard to see there, but you can see there's a gear spinning underneath there. So there's actually a small tooth wheel there and then a larger one there and then the red one. So there are a couple before you can actually start seeing that move. And what's interesting is the, the tooth pattern on that is such that it only moves, uh, you know, like once per rotation there of the, the white one you can see. And then that one also has a similar tooth pattern to the one underneath here. So let's, let's just take some of these off so you can see. So you can see that every so often it will move the white one. And the white one is connected to the blue one. The blue one is connected to the other blue one. And then that's connected to this white one, which is connected right there, okay? And this one has sort of a tooth spline. So what that will do is turn this cam. So there I just moved it. Uh, it actually was in defrost. So this is regular running. So that inner set of contacts is the compressor running, which would be the inner two uh, contacts there. And then after a certain amount of runtime, now this, this is only running when the compressor is active. So it's not running all the time 24 seven. It's only running when there's power to the compressor. So it measures how much compressor runtime there is. And then when it gets to the end there, okay, you can see the inner set of contacts is connected. That's the compressor. And then it switches to the left set of contacts. So now there's power coming off of that one and that will go to the defrost element for a very short period of time uh, before it clicks back to regular operation. Okay, so that is how a defrost timer works. Uh, this, this part is actually available through a hole in the case. So you can stick a screwdriver into this and turn it manually. So you can manually advance it to go into defrost if you want to. So just look kind of around it would be where your thermostat uh, control is in your refrigerator. Look underneath for a little circular hole with, with that kind of profile. Okay, but the, the splines in this allow for you to turn this independent of the gear drive. It allows you to advance it independent of the gear drive so you can manually make it defrost if you want to. So, defrost, back to regular run. So that is how a defrost timer works. So the only other thing I didn't mention here is what this brown thing is, and that's actually a locking capacitor that is put in series with the motor. And that's just because this motor is so small it doesn't require hardly any energy to run. All it needs is basically the pulses from the AC current and that's what that capacitor does is it just kind of blocks the current from freely flowing through that tiny motor which would uh, burn it up in a short time. Um, so if you look at the, the value there, it's a 0.14 microfarad and 250 volt rated capacitor. So conceivably that might go bad. Uh, so you could test that capacitor, make sure it's working. The other thing that can go bad with these is the contacts uh, get burned out. Uh, I clean these a little bit but they had carbon on them just from arcing. So every time these open and close, there's gonna be a little bit of, of arcing going on in there. 
and eventually those uh, those contact points are going to get pitted and maybe lose having a bad connection. Uh, something in here could break, you know, you could have a gear break or you could have this thing melt. Maybe if you get a bad enough connection, it's just going to sit there and melt itself. So uh, they do go bad every once in a while. So if you want, you can open them up and see what, if you can fix it or not, but you can just also buy a new one.